In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a nice bubble chart where the scale here is a time scale, but also make a nice distinguished item. For example, here 12 a.m., 1 a.m., and all the hours have a solid color, while all the uh, minutes or hours plus minutes has a uh, basic or default color. So let's start to explore how we can make our scale present it more clearly like this. So let's start to look how to add day ticks and hour ticks in a x axis in a bubble chart in chart.js. So the first thing what we need is to have our default code, which you can find here, which is on chartjs3.com, this specific link here. And you can find this link with the getting started. You can find that in the description box. Once you're on there, scroll, once you're on the site here, scroll down and just copy this entire chunk of code. Copy this. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here and it explains it all. Paste is all in there, cut, and then I will cut this out quickly and put the title in here. And just a quick note, I'm saying here with the minute we're going to day ticks, hour ticks, but it could be minutes, it could be anything you want. So what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to convert this into a bubble chart. So we're going to scroll down here and I'm going to say here down and here bubble. If I save this, we're still not done because what we need to do here is basically having the different structure. So for a bubble chart, and later on I do going, I will be updating this later on or adjusting this. So I'm going to make it very simple. So I'm going to say here the x value, y value would be let's say three, uh, six, and then the radius or the r will be six or, or fifteen is nice. So it's easy to spot. So if I save this, refresh. All right. So doesn't work yet. Labels need to be removed. Save, refresh. Uh, let's quickly check here. Syntax error 57. So what are we missing here is of course here the Y. Save that. There we are. So now we have this, but of course we're not done here because look at this here. We need to have this eventually with a date. So what I'm going to do here now is first of all I'm going to add up here the date adapter, so which you can find here in chartjs.org. Go to this website here and then click here on ecosystem. Once you're in ecosystem, scroll down here. We're going to grab a date adapter. So select here on adapters. Then we'll jump immediately to the category of adapters. And then here I'm going to use this one here. For me personally, this one is harder to use, but requires only one JavaScript file to edit. To add. And this one here requires two JavaScript files, but it's easier to use. And this one here has been deprecated since 2020, so I don't recommend this at all. However, because the, this one only has one JavaScript file, it's just faster to load than two. So I'm going to click here on date FNS because I'm going, I will not be using any features from the date FNS, just only the support of date. So I'm going to copy this second line here, which is the charges date adapter FNS bundle. Copy this. And then what I will do here is go in here. Put some enter, enter, and then paste this in here. What is very important here? The char chart library needs to load first before we have here the date uh, adapter. Why? This one has certain variables, or at least the chart yes has certain variables that the date adapter needs to find first before we can trigger. So we save this, refresh. All right, nothing happened yet because we need to set the date. So I'm going to set the date here. I'm going to say x, then I'm going to say comma, and then I'm going to say uh, type. So what is the type? Now it will be the time object, which we are now able to do and enable it now because of the date FNS uh, adapter that we have. So now we have here the time object and then here I'm going to say unit will be in minutes. You can do hour, sorry, minute. You can do hours or is it hour or hours one or the other. And then you have days, whatever you want. I think it's in, in singular, so it's day, minute, hour. So we have this. So I just maintain it like that. If I save this now, refresh, that, or at least it shows something here, but of course it doesn't understand what's going on because we don't have an official value. So I'm going to put in an official date value in here and after we'll duplicate this multiple times. So to do this, I need to make sure I have a proper date adapt, well, proper date. So I'm going to create merely a date object. So I'm going to say a new date, which is the JavaScript. Uh, function to create a date object and what I'm going to say here is well let's get the current date or at least what's today 2022 this is a string value so 2022 April 20th and then we're going to say here the hours and etc etc so I'll say here 
zero zero colon zero zero colon zero zero hours minutes seconds that's that and then we're going to say a GMT and then I'm just going to grab here we can say here I'll just grab my local time here which is Greenwich Mean Time plus eight hours so now we have this put a comma here and paste 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 all right so we have multiple items here what I want to do is I want to do it in hours and minutes so that would mean that I want to put in here well if this is here midnight let's say here uh, hours and minutes so let's say this will be five minutes this is 12 uh, 10 minutes 25 minutes 35 minutes then we can say you maybe 55 minutes and we will make this one I'll just make it just for the interesting part just to see how it will look eventually one hour so it's 1 a.m. and five minutes here if I save this refresh all right there you are you can see here we get all these nice values here and well just for the sake of it let's make this let's change it a little bit 4.5 there we are all right so we have a nice spread all over the chart so we have this here you can see here this and you can see here this one is nice and this one is nice while the others have a lot of uh well or you can see here these are just increments of three beautiful However, what I want to do here is I want to highlight this one and highlight that one, or at least every time it understands that it's 12 a.m. or one o'clock, like a full number, I want to highlight it in a bolder color. So it's easy to see for me. From, all right, this is this. And later on, we can even do 15 minutes, a quarter, so of a minute, uh, part of an hour. So let's do this later on. So what we're going to do here now is I'm going to put a comma, and we're going to focus on the ticks because we want to modify here the ticks. And what we really want to do here, we want to make it distinguish, to, or we want to distinguish the major ticks compared to the minor ticks. So this is the major tick, this is the minor ticks here. The minor ticks are ticks that we consider less important, but the major tick is the one that is like our, I guess our, our indicator, the leading one. In this case, 12 and 1 a.m., the full hours. So what I'm going to do here is major, and we're going to say here, this will be, uh, this is the major tick. We say yeah, enable equals true, so that it understands that we have to make a distinguish between the major and the minors. And ChartJS automatically grabs these. That's so that's a nice thing. But then what I want to do is I want to make sure if I save this right now, refresh here. Uh, first of all, it understands this here, so that's nice. That's really beautiful. But what I want to make sure is that this is bolded as well. So let's start to work on that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say the font in the ticks. Then I'm going to say here context, which is a callback functionality here. And all I want to do now for now is say console log context. Save this and let's see what we get here. Refresh, open up developer tab. Or let me refresh one more time. Open up developer tab. You can see here all of these ticks here. Index zero, so it understands when is the index and this is the number. And you can see here the tick. If I click on this. Is this a major, yes or no? Well, in this case, it is a major, and the label name is 12 a.m. Flat, beautiful. And then if we do this one here, say you take, is this a major? No, that's false. Why? It is 12.01. So apparently it goes to ma many things, and I think it will, it will go, because we have indicated minute, it will go from every minute here. So this is like 60 items already. So that's interesting. However, what I want to do now is run an if statement, what is a way to organize and to make sure that these that are true or that are majors major equals true are the ticks that we need to grab or get, get a special color so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here context.tick let's save that and we get all of this we get a tick here now you can see here major and what I want to do here is I want to say this and I want to make sure that this row has a tick that major. The reason why I'm doing like this is so we can see them both. But you can see here as well if it's true or false. So basically, it understands true, then it says false, then it says true, and uh, probably it does a lot more behind the scenes. Probably it calculates even more. I have no idea. Or this is from both sides, if I'm not mistaken, somehow. However, anyway, it doesn't matter. This is the ones we need. But it does understand true and false. And it knows here true, that's this one. Then we have six or 59 minutes of false. Then we have again true, 
then here this one is we can ignore that so what we need to do here is the following i'm going to say here now with a constant this constant will say bolded ticks the ticks that will be bolded as a condition of needing to be this and that so they should be together here and what i want to do here is if this is the case so if this is equals basically true so i'm going to create an if statement here so if this is true that it has tick and it has a tick major and then when well, i say if that is the case i'll say this is bold else i will say here default and default means just no value because it will then automatically get the default value so once we have this we have now if i do a console log we should see here the bolded tick at least whatever the value is and there you are bold and else nothing which is basically the default uh item and then here bold again all right you can see the true i think the true is from this console log here so then what i want to do is once we have this i'm going to say in the font we have the weight option or namespace and the weight item so what we can do is like this sorry we're going to say return and we're going to return this parenthesis so basically in the font we're just doing this font weight and then the weight whatever weight would be here you always can say bold or or whatever so that's what we're doing here but then we do it in a formula base so we can just automate it with what we want and then we're going to say here the weight will be bolded tick or whatever this value would be it doesn't have to be a bolded tick or it will not be bold always but depending on the condition so once we have this save refresh and all right so interesting it doesn't show yet so we say you bold a tick return bold a tick what am i missing let's see all right so i'll quickly check what i'm missing my bad that's very sloppy work of mine misspelled word wait with h t of course not th so then we have this here you can see it 12 a.m 1 a.m and then you have here the time so what we could do as well is we could change this into hours to make this in different hours or segments of 15 minutes or something like that let's say here uh zero zero and then i'll make this 15 and then we make this 30 and then when i make this um we can make this 45 and then we have here zero zero one and then we have here one let's say 130 let's see what happens and 145 or even i'll make this 2 a.m save refresh there we are you can see you now it starts to completely do different options and of course the bigger your values will the more appropriate it will become and i guess if you would do here all of this you will see here different options as well you can see here there you are you have every 20 minute segments beautiful and that's basically the way you can play around with these time options so if you enjoyed this and maybe you want to go even more further and have some more advanced items, I'm going to recommend you to explore this one here on how to filter dates in a chart in Chart.js. You can filter the dates and then the chart will automatically update with the selected date range, which is very, very useful as well in Chart.js.